Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Tesla. Yes, my name is Dr. Andrew Michaels. Uh, we spoke earlier on the phone. Yes, I work with the Department of Navy. Uh, yes, in Washington, D.C. Uh, here's a copy of my business card. And this is my identification. Okay. Thank you. All right. I just have a few questions for you to this evening, and uh, I don't think this interview will take a lot of your time. I understand that the United States government and the current administration have not always looked upon your inventions with all due respect in sincerity, with taking you very seriously uh, is late, but I assure you that tonight I am fully empowered to make an offer for one of your creations, if I may do so. Okay. Uh, I have a government draft and we could negotiate a price for said item that we believe you have in your possession that you spoke about many times in the press and that would be your let me get this correct from my notes your teleforce death ray am i correct <laughs> no I, I assure you the united states government is very serious about discussing the terms of purchasing for a one-time possible use uh, your teleforce death ray and we can negotiate using it in the future at your discretion I really don't think we need to go into personal de details I, I I understand I'm overweight. Yes, I had bacon and eggs this morning. I understand. I do not think I breathe like a cow. All right. I'm I'm not sure where we're going with this. If if I've offended you in some way, may we discuss the teleforce death ray? I understand it doesn't. Sir, we both know that the Teleforce death ray does exist. And I believe you have it very close by. I believe it is possibly within arm's length of this room. And I also believe that's why you chose to stay inside a small hotel room and not a large house. So that your personal belongings are within arm's length. Would I be correct in this assumption? I do not think I am that smart and wise, but I do believe that we aren't opening up to each other. I have complete discretion to write you a draft in the amount that you believe is... We... I don't understand. I'm not mocking you, sir. This is not a joke. There's a war. I know you know there's a war going on. But that's not the war this weapon is going to be used in. I plan on using your weapon in 1947. Because tomorrow for me, sir, will be 1947, not January 7th, 1943. Do you know anything about this, sir? As silly as it may sound, my daughter drew this. That's the moon. And this is her friend. 
and her friend visits her at night and tells her stories, sir. And they communicate and they talk. Does any of this look familiar to you, sir? In 1947, I met these people and became their friend. And they became very close to me and my family and safeguard my family's survival in the time of the war, sir. And I think you know what war I am speaking of. The war between the worlds of the ones who have ascended. And I believe you made contact with them in the 1880s while you were doing radio telemetry testing. And I believe you received signals from them and I believe they came and talked to you. And they've been coming here for many years to talk to you. And I believe out of fear from what they told you in fear of the other ascendant race that you created the Teleforce Death Ray. And I also believe, as I said earlier, that it's in this room. And I'm willing to make an offer for it. But if money is not a question to you at this point in your life, sir, what is? I am a time traveler. And you are in a quantum time bubble inside your hotel room. I am in 1947, and you are in 1943, and it's January 7th, sir, and there's not a lot of time. Pretty soon, a maid is going to walk through that door. She's going to check on you because you've been meditating and studying for two full days, and she's going to ignore that do not disturb sign. And if she opens that door and sees me while this is going on, the quantum time flux bubble will burst. And I could possibly be killed as well as you. I don't know what would happen if this energy sphere is damaged. And you do know why it's a sphere, don't you? Because a sphere can travel through the ether. And you still believe in the ether, don't you, Mr. Tesla? You still believe that not everything is made clear by the theory of relativity. We need that teleforce death ray because you're not going to be here in 1947 to save the world as you dreamed. You may be our modern day technological messiah, but you won't be our savior. You're just the prophet, sir. Somebody else has to use that weapon to stop Cthulhu when he rises out of the sea at the city of Riley. I don't know if I'm that man. I don't even know if I could survive, but I know I have to try. I have to try and reach you somehow. You've got to help me. You've got to trust me. And I know that a middle-aged, overweight, balding, carnivorous, pension-earning government bureaucrat of the lowest level in the Department of Navy is not exactly someone you've grown to trust in your 86 years of life. But this one time, I've got to get you to believe me. If we don't make this happen, there isn't going to be anyone left after 1947 on this earth to both remember you or use any of your inventions. We'll all be dead and buried right alongside you. There is
is something I can do for you. And if I do, it's a one-time deal. Do you know what this is? Yeah. It's a cage. It's a ten cent cage, sir, from Taiwan. See? Made in Taiwan. And a child put a dime in a gumball machine when he was a little boy and this came out. And he looked at it. And he had an epiphany. He had a vision. And he realized that he was like that little bird in the cage. And he knew his whole life, he knew that there was never going to be a time when he got out of that cage. Do you see the three sides of the triangle that the bird hangs from? Everything in threes, sir. He knew no matter how hard he dreamed or how hard he studied or how hard he worked and how much freedom his country gave him and how much money he made. He was always going to be in this cage. And the cage isn't here, sir, is it? The cage is here. Isn't it? It's the cage of the mind, sir. And he knew this even at a young age because he was so alone. And he had family, mother, and father. He had brothers, sisters. And as he grew older, he had friends and a wife and a child. And he held on to this cage. And it sat in plain sight in his room. From the day he found it at six, till this very day, till this day, it sat in plain sight in his room. And in 41 years, not one person, not his children, not his wife, not his mother, or his father, or his siblings, no friend ever came to his house and picked it up and asked, what is this on the shelf? By itself, on the shelf, for all to see. because it was invisible, wasn't it? Because everything about this cage is invisible and they can't see it and they don't know what it's like to be alone in a room full of people, do they, Mr. Tesla? They don't know what it's like to have visions and ideas and dreams that are so strong that all you have to do is put a pencil to a paper to make them become a reality. And they can't see that. But there are the dreamers and there are the dream weavers, the ones who make dreams reality and we can't stop can we we can't turn it off we can't choose not to do the things that we do and invent and create and 
build. We can't stop these things. They come from so far inside us. So, so deep inside us. So full of anger. So full of love and pride and hate and love and frustration and anguish. And all these things, they just, they just come together. And you feel it. The idea in the heart and the soul, and they come together. And for that one moment, that one tiny little moment in our small time on this planet, we escape that cage. Just once in a while, it's nice to get out of that cage. Do you remember this drawing? My daughter made it. This is her friend. And while I'm talking to you and all the other people trying to stop this silly, stupid war, she watched these people get killed. And your enemies and my enemies, they have her now. And they have my wife. And they're in a boat. Sitting above Riley. Facing off an entire United States of America naval force. And my government doesn't care that my little girl and her friends or my wife are going to be casualties if I don't come back with that death ray. While I was off doing all these things, our enemies showed me exactly what they thought of, of me. And they've got them. And uh, you know as well as I do, my government's not going to stop. They're not going to do a damn thing just because I told them, please don't let them die. Please wait. And I got one chance in hell of stopping this. And that's if you and I make a deal. And I can do one thing for you. I'm sorry, sir. I did not mean to make you upset. You've known for a long time that they're coming, and you didn't tell anyone. You're the consummate showman. Now you need to show everybody what kind of a human being you really are. And I'm going to give you something in return that you never dreamed in a million years could happen. I'm going to take you back to 1923. And I'm going to take you back to the time when we were young. And I'm going to allow you to live out the rest of eternity with her. And you know that when I do this, you already asked them if it's possible that when I do this it's going to break the timeline and you know something bad's going to happen to me for doing it but I'm willing to do that to save my wife and my child and our friends our allies sir and I'm willing to do it stop this war right here and now and put Cthulhu back where he belongs mm. 
She is beautiful. She is unique. She's all yours. All you have to do is go with me back to 1922, sir. After you hand me the Teleforce Death Ray. I understand. This, this is it. This hasn't been dusted off in a while. Okay. You've got to be kidding me. a deal. Yes. Yes, I am. I hear the maid unlocking the door. Thank you, Mr. Tesla. United States government also thanks you. Hope you enjoy your time in 1922. God bless you, sir.